Ramadan Mubarak from Gambian Prophets. Ramadan Mubarak. So we take it away from the ambit of both public service and that of the president uh, in order to eliminate the political content element there. So the membership of the special commission, I would admit, is not something we can go into in all aspects of the constitution. There ought to be an act of parliament that will determine that. But it should be a special commission. And these commissioners must not be members of the civil service, they must not be in the security services. That would be for parliament to, uh, to, 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 to determine. I think it should be left for parliament to do that. But beyond that, there should also be a parallel process. And this process should include a public hearing um, prior to confirmation uh, by, uh, of course, uh, prior to that, it should be a public hearing by civil society. So since the civil society will be involved, and all parties who may be nominated to be members of this special commission will subject themselves to independent scrutiny of civil society. And it will be an open process that will involve all leaders of the country and all parties, so that at the preliminary level, which should become a legal requirement, civil society will be able to scrutinize and also make their findings public before you move to the next stage, which would be perhaps the parliamentary scrutiny in addition to uh, scrutiny of the civil society. Because these are people who should be of impeccable character and they should be highly impartial so that we avoid you know, a political crisis and consumer crisis in the country. You know, it is to ground stability and security in our country in the democratic process. And the second thing is, as we know, um, Section 41 provides for, for, for that, um, that the public service comes out. Now, when you come to removal, again, for judges, it's uh, uh, Section 141, I think. Uh, sorry, the Elections Act. Removal of, of chairpersons is uh, Section 141, sec, uh, Subsection 5 and 6 of the Constitution. Talks about how you remove, remove judges. It's really very clear. It subjects them to um, speak of the parliament convening, then you go through a parliamentary process. Then, you know, it's, it's a very difficult, rigorous process. I would like this to be important, uh, that. And it is clear, we cannot put everything in the Constitution. But if we provide for a judicial service commission in the Constitution, we can provide for a special service commission also in the Constitution uh, for, for IEC chairperson and commissioners. Secondly, if we prescribe the, the, uh, if we prescribe the manner by which judges could be removed, then we could also have a similar manner also in the Constitution, so that it will not be subject to only politicians in Parliament. Uh, I, I would like Section 1516 to be important, you know, in reference to the manner in which, uh, as, as, as an analogy, the manner in which uh, IEC chairperson and commissioners should be removed also. Now, this is going to avoid two things. One, it is going to avoid an executive position and two, parliamentary dictatorship. Because politics keeps changing. You know, you can be a majority today, then the next election you are a minority. Or you could be in, in both ways. Now, it must not be left to the, to the whim of a specific group at any particular point in time, because the law will not be certain in that case. So it ought to be fair and equal to everyone. Now, when you come to funding, uh, I am of the view that the situation where only Gambians, no matter where you may be in any part of the world, must be permitted to contribute to political parties. If a Gambian who is opulent and can contribute a hundred million dollars to a political party, the Gambian has a right to do so. Unless if we want to put a cap on political party funding and we say every single contributor should not exceed this amount in order to avoid the issues that was raised by um, uh, that was raised by Mr. Jalo and I believe um, Mr. Kuya as well. So we could have a cap. You can contribute, but then you know your contribution must not exceed, let's say, ten thousand dollars, for example. But this is a detail that cannot be reflected in the constitution. But an idea, um, and I'm not saying it cannot be there. It's up to the commissioners to see whether where it should be stated uh, and for the public to accept it. But every Gambian should be allowed to contribute in any form and to avoid or to avoid the potential for non gambians dominating our political space or subjecting a, a government to, to certain control, uh, non gambians should not be permitted, whether natural or artificial, whether it's a corporation or individual, it should be clearly stated 
that non-governments must not be permitted to contribute to political party funding in any form. And there has to be consequences for political parties, uh, you know, upon evidence that non-government had contributed, what would be the sanction? But there should be consequences, so that we know that our democracy is controlled by Gambians and not subject to foreign influence. We have enough foreign influence from developed countries and financial institutions, multilaterals, globalization that is impacting on our politics and on, on, uh, on our economy and, and everything else. I think that is sufficient enough. We do not want individuals from outside also, in addition to the body, to come and dictate what we do in our country. Uh, uh, as to declaration of assets by, by uh, political parties or individuals, that is really a non-starter. They are not giving me money and I, and I want to ally myself fully with the position presented by um, the Honorable Party Leader of the UDP. You cannot subject me, no, sub, no taxation without representation, so to speak. You cannot subject me to give you my accounts when it is my money and you cannot give me anything. Why should I account to you <laughs> which, how I spend my money? I mean, this is unjust. We fought for it. Uh, we were against it. And it should not happen again. Uh, and I believe it is still in the laws, but the IEC should not, in fact, insist on trying to uh, implement, to, to execute that part of the law. It is patently unjust. You know, no one should subject me to explain how I spend my money. It's my money. Why would I come and account to you? Why I should spend my money? Really, frankly, this is something that, um, that, that should be the enforcement. But we all know why it was there, because the yeah, don't want to know you know, what has been happening. Uh, the other thing is Constituency Boundaries Commission, and uh, this is provided for uh, in the Constitution. Uh, it should be, we cannot have different standards in a country. You cannot have, you know, 7,000 people in Constituency A, and then 3,000 people in Constituency B. And they all have the same, only one member of parliament in the same National Assembly with equal powers, equal function. It is not fair. So if we are going to have fairness in the democratic process, every constituency should be as far as reasonably practical, have the same number of population. The democracy should be identical. So this means we will have to revisit again the current constituency we have in terms of numbers, and we try to correct that injustice, because it is unjust. And today we cannot continue to institutionalize that injustice. Every constituency must have equal numbers, as far as reasonably practical. And this will eliminate uh, the current unfairness and allow the democratic space uh, to be evenly contested. Now, you see that um, this is Section 9 of the Elections Act, which was amended in 2001, uh, to give power to the IEC and the minister. In this case, I think it's the minister of uh, local government. You see a collusion here. So essentially, uh, it was amended because it is going to serve the interests of uh, the ruling party at the time. Now, this historic injustice must also be reversed. And, um, and I think it should be stated in the constitution because you don't want to leave everything to, 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 uh, to parliament. The danger is here, we will not have this process again in the near future. Constitutions are meant to be, to serve, they're meant to be durable. We are not going to be changing them every time, and we will not have a CRC again 10 years down the line, 5 years down the line. It is not expected that we will have. So this is a unique historical opportunity. We must seize and ensure that some of these elements are contained there, because assuming we have a GMC majority in, in Parliament and a GMC government, we will influence what is in the Act in order to make sure that you know, it avails our advantage in the next elections. But this is not fair to the country. So we should avoid a process that is going to create a dictatorship either of the executive or of parliament. We say no to dictatorship in any form, whether parliamentary dictatorship or executive dictatorship. So the potential where it could raise its head in both directions, we should cut the fangs of the snake right now. And we have the opportunity now uh, to, to do that. So I will strongly urge the, the, the committee, to the commission to look at that critically that some of these elements that will assure fairness and avoid a potential for uh, for for dictatorship in either form be be negated and be contained in the constitution. <coughs> uh, and then I come to the, the voting. We've been fighting against this tone. In fact, I we call it James call it tone vote. We have the only country in the world, perhaps, who is still engaged, who is in the stone age of elections. We are the only country using man word. Man word is a stone. 
So this stone voting must end. We must put an end to voting. Be aware of the fact that this is a privilege and we are very grateful for the privilege to come and discuss about um, a future constitution for this country. Um, I'm Dr. Savali, I'm representing GDC. And first and foremost, I want to talk about funding. And we are of the view that uh, funding should be liberalized, that funding should not be restrictive as we currently have it in the Constitution, and IEC should not be overburdening people with proofs. Because I think we are independent people, and so our independence cannot be restricted by proving A, B, and C. Currently, we have to submit reports, audit reports. We have to hold congresses, which are very expensive, and none of this is funded by the state, so funding should be liberalized, and sources of funding should be the business of the political parties and should not be the business of the state. Um, as far as incumbency is concerned, this is all geared towards um, political party funding. That the state, in, uh, the party in government cannot be using state resources to the disadvantage of opposition parties. That there be checks in place um, to make sure that the incumbency is not hovering over us like we've seen it previously. That uh, parties in government don't use state resources to the disadvantage of other parties. Um, in lieu of that, there are other countries where there are state subventions. At a minimum, I expect that the state give subventions to political parties based on percentages of previous elections, at least. But if the state is not giving any money to political parties, I don't think it should be the business of the state to ask for audit reports of political parties. Um, talking about commissioners, uh, we are of the view that um, they should have their assets declared. <clears throat> this is 90 days after their appointment and 90 days after their removal. This way, we will be really sure that they have not been corrupted during the process. And also, in, for removal of commissioners, that there be a process involving the Supreme Court at a minimum that removal of commissioners cannot be arbitrary. And let it be just as discussed by our previous speakers, that the conditions necessary for the removal of a judge be just as required for the removal of an IEC commission. Um, I'll beg to differ from most of the previous speakers on the issue of demarcation. Yes, I know most of you believe that demarcation should be based on population. Uh, let me just take this as an example. I guess the United States, which is a, a country over 200 years old, and definitely with a recognized mature democracy, have a state like North Dakota, which has less than a million people. They only have two senators. A state like California has over a hundred million people. They only have two senators. So if a mature democracy like the United States will have two senators from each state, <coughs> I guess the Gambia can have parliamentarians from three villages or a population of 7,000 versus a population of 20,000 because there are many other factors that should determine what parliamentary representation should be and not just population. Because if we from this end start to do demarcation based on population only, it is very likely in the next 10 years 80% of all members of parliament in this country will come from a 70%, 70 mile radius. That will be over 80% of the members of parliament in this country will come from a 70 mile radius of this country. And that will leave at least over 80 to 90% of the rest of the country with the smallest number of parliamentarians. And it is in the parliament building where development uh, agenda is discussed. That's where the national cake is divided. So I will beg to differ as far as demarcation is concerned. Yes, it should be done by the IEC, we concur. But it should not just be based on population, because if it's left to population, our fear will definitely become a reality. Thank you.
Good afternoon to everybody. Um, I am Omar Kamara of National Convention Party. Um, we are very happy here with the commission. So we hope the commission, with the, with the, with the collaboration with the public, general public, we hope they will constitute a good laws for Gambians, not just laws that will favor individual parties or so. So we are very grateful. And uh, this, the parties are very happy because you call us here. So this also means that we will also contribute towards the same law. So that is, thank you for you. All right. So I talk on a few issues that is uh, in terms of donation, like other speakers previously quoted, um, political parties, their donations, or otherwise their earning capacities should be in secret. They should not be disposed. And uh, the government has not to interfere in such. All right? So when we come to a voting process, now in the voting process, just as the previous speaker says, um, we have been voting in the ballot for so long, and now we feel that it's outdated, so we should now improve to you know, paper voting now. All right. Um, the next point, that is asset declaration. Now, um, I thought, or we thought, the leaders should declare their asset before their appointment and after their appointment. But political parties must not disclose their asset because that's not to the interest of the uh, ruling party because the ruling party never made fundings. So therefore, uh, political parties should not disclose their fundings too. That should be a secret part of it, All right? Now, we have seen uh, uh, the CRC is trying very well, and we have seen many, many other laws in the Gambia. Now, what is our problem now uh, uh, is when laws are constituted, nobody follows whether these laws are done or not. So that is very important. So we have to have a sector, like we set different commissions to look into these matters so that constitutions can apply laws as we want it. You know? But when we say this is the law, we put it at that, it will lie like that, and nobody will follow. Others will violate, and others will do otherwise. So nobody will follow. So we have to have different commissions to look into those laws we constitute, so that we, we really know they are functioning in the right direction. Huh? So. All right, when we talk of uh, demarcation of consequences, yes, demarcation should be done. Because other areas, you talk of 20,000 or more. So other areas are very small amount. So anyhow, demarcation should be done. But if we said we select IEC and uh, it is independent, so therefore we should assign IEC with that job to do the demarcation as we like it. All right, so the final thing is, now in politics or a country, we must have faith. We must be sincere. So many politicians are law-abiding, but their followers are uh, disgruntled, or one can say they're arrogant. And so we should kick into that. If political party, your leader is law-abiding, now your followers are arrogant. So how, how will it make? In this office here, or in this gathering here, I think everybody, nobody is, or everybody is equal. We are all Gambians here. This is very beautiful. We see each other as one. So therefore, I think that's what should be continued. We must have faith. You must know that if you are to become a president, you will be. So no matter you, you, you go, like for instance, when we talk of the history of National Convention Party, we can know we have many difficulties on the line. But have we ever make any demonstration from onset to now? Never. So therefore, let's maintain peace in our country. What you should have, you will have it. No matter you tell your people to go and riot. What you should get, you will get it. Yeah? So let us, all right then, sir. I want to share my, some of my ideas with you. I do agree that we should not block the Constitution. It should just have the framework for political parties. 
and other issues can, can be captured in, uh, in the Acts of Parliament. I, I am a believer that there should be restriction on the private funding of political parties. It looks like people assume that political parties are private. I mean, I mean, if you look at the operations and everything of political parties, we cannot call it private. And the Constitution itself provides that for political parties to be registered, you must conform, the organizational structure must conform to democratic principles. So there should be transparency in these operations. There should, people should be able to know, uh, people should know how you got your money, where you got it from, and, uh, and be able to assess the political party. So we believe, I, I believe that for people to say, I mean, where we get our money is not government's business, it's not people's business. There is no transparency in that. It's, you are out as a political party to be able to present yourself to the people of the Gambia to govern the country. So there, all the fears must be put aside. And therefore, I think there should be restrictions. Um, in fact, political party funding should be restricted to Gambians and Gambian entities and uh, no external funding of political parties. Uh, the other thing I want to, I want to say here is I, I definitely uh, disagree and I lament that uh, statement where, some, where one of the speakers was saying that uh, the former president wanted to know, Yaya Jame wanted to know that's why that law was passed. That was too petty. We have seen people, we have seen people, we have seen people in office for just one, two years, and we have seen how they have transformed themselves. We have not talked about that. But what I want to make clear is, if people believe that they know, or they are independent, or they are honest, they should present themselves to the people to go and represent us at the National Assembly. If you don't want parliamentary dictatorship, legislative dictatorship, because legislators are people who are people voted into office by the Gambians. So there is no more the better qualified person to dictate the affairs of the Gambia than legislators. If I believe that I am good, I am honest, I am independent, let me present myself to the people. But we cannot have groups being treated who can, whom, whom we believe can dictate the affairs of the state, and you live in parliamentarians. I think parliamentary legislators are the best people to determine, on behalf of the Gambian people, what we need and what we want. As regards uh, ballot papers and ballot tokens, it is known that ballot tokens that we used are one of the most transparent. Yes, there are challenges as we have a configuration of political parties, 10, 15, 20, there will be challenges. And in, that, in this circumstance, I think there is need for us to revisit it. But uh, it creates, uh, paper ballot also has a lot of challenges and problems even where they are, in the countries where they are practiced. You have uh, void ballot tokens. People do a lot of things with it. And the ballot boxes can be stuffed. A lot of things can happen. I had somebody say they went to a, an area where you had ballot tokens all over. That's easy. That's, that's most difficult. If you have paper... Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan. Ramadan. from Gambian province. Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan. from Gambian province.